Uh, this weekend shop talk. Uh, this is going to be a little different take. I'm putting. Vi I've already shot the video, and if you notice, I've posted one of my lawnmower blades, and you'll see the same. Uh, basically, I'm in the same room. I, I've kind of done them both together, and we'll put them together at different times. So I'm just doing all the openings and closings in the house right now. Uh, this week's uh, shop talk video is my version of the handle that goes in the quick change post. Plus, I had to repair the cross slide where it anchors on the lathe, and I didn't get quite all of it because I ran into a problem. Uh, basically, my lathe, and you'll see in the video, it, it uses a stud that's mounted to the cross slide. Uh, that's the way the lathe master Asian lathe's made. And so, when I bought my lathe, I actually bought the tool block that Lathe Master sells, and what they do is take a quick change block, board it out for the stud, and they've supplied you a nut that went on the top. It's actually a, a nut that goes down inside the uh, block. So I actually don't have a nut stud like you see on a lot of other lathes. So for me to make a handle like the other guys, it would be kind of hard to do. So. Uh, by the way, I'm working on the first video. It's loading. Uh, I'm all, you, sitting in my office doing it. So what I decided to do was take, use a 22 millimeter socket and just dedicate it for it. Just leave it on the lathe, obviously. Set it over it. And then I, I welded a handle to it and made a aluminum handle. And that's what we're going to be showing in this week's shop talk. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, now I'm going to work on another project and uh, bring you in on and it's something else I've been seeing other people's have. And um, I'm going to hand held you over here, walk you over here to lathe and show you. My quick change post, the way it's put on the lathe, the stud is mounted into the fixture. So to put the handle on it, it's going to take a little difference. So what I've decided to do to have a handle on there like a lot of the other guys you see on YouTube, I'm going to take a socket and basically cut and weld me a bolt to it and make a handle to go on it. That's going to be the theory anyway. So we're going to get you back here. Hopefully you can see the lathe here while we're working and kind of just thinking this thing through. And basically what I'm going to do here is take a bolt. i got a half inch bolt here because I'm not going to do nothing fancy. I'm See if that would be a good slip handle. Tight it up with. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and cut this bolt head off. Now I just took it over and tacked it. So this is going to be the handle angle. And see, this is this can set on the lathe, but this will let you loosen and tighten it. Okay. It's a 22 millimeter socket. So I'm going to go back and finish welding. Okay. Like, let me see if we can see if you can see me. Get you a little better bird's eye there. Okay, we got you a bird's eye view. We're going to face this fool off. And... This is just going to be the handle, folks. So... first end. That way I, I can just do it while it's chucked up. I'm just going to hold it about right there and we're going to cut a little taper and blend it in anyway. So. Get the saw off. That's just no length. This is just going to be my handle. Go ahead and drill with the center drill and drill will tap it and then we'll come back here and we'll turn the tape. I 
also wild there, so. careful how I cut my lathe off anyway. I need to, I don't know why, when I wired the shop, I get off that breaker, if I flip that switch really, really hard, it, it'll kick it, the breaker will kick out when it comes off. Uh, electrician friend of mine said probably what I need to do is just go ahead and put, it's on a 20 amp circuit, which should be plenty of amperage, but he said you might want to go up to 25 or 30. This lathe has been rewired. It's, uh, I've got a drum switch on it because I had trouble with the original OEM switches that come with it. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I drum switched it, which works really good. Here we go. Get a little bit of. Right, I'm gonna cut it like a 10 degree chamfer on this. So. <laughs>
You might have heard me say, say something while we was working a while ago. I had a problem. I went to tighten up the screws and one of the bolts was stripped. So on further investigation, this one only had two bolts, and on further investigation what I discovered is that the cast iron on the cross slide piece here was broke, stripped. So what I've done is I've done a lot of this off camera, I put it up in my mill, and I've drilled the holes out to where I put 3 8 bolts in it, which is basically a 9 16 head. So that is the way it works. So we'll see. Now we're going to try to face this off. <laughs> pull this out a little bit we're going to turn this down we're going what we're going to do is make us a little spacer here to hide the three is all we're doing beautify this a little bit Thank you. 
Want step drill. I never had that to happen. Let me get my, my gauge out of the way. Morse taper. Let go. What's it? Well, I've never had that. What's a new one on me, folks? Mr. Bozo, I guess, is having lots of fun here today. Having a lot of Mr. Bozo moments. Had the new bill delayed. The old bill is pretty fucking happy. I want this to be a high collar. I mean, it seems like everything's not going the way I want it to be today. Well, and I'm on camera and it's all done. Usually when this goes on, you're not on camera. Well, let's try this again. Let's try it again. This should just go through there like butter. Because there shouldn't be anything to hold it. We're just going to run the, put the drill at the center. Hopefully this is going to be simple. Because there shouldn't be a, anything to hold this thing. Because this, this is going to, should just be flying in there. I think I've got some dull taps. I might have to invest in some. Some of my, my taps just don't want to go right. This, this, especially 
These, these have really been a pain today. I'll get my tap guy because that seems like what we're not want to do right. It's not. I have a lot of Okay, now we're going to do this cut off. There's the completed project. See, in my lathe, you notice I said earlier, there's the nut. So that's why I can't do like some of the other people. And that's just fairly simple. That's a 22 millimeter socket. Picked it up at uh, Advance. It's a gear wrench. And then that's a half inch bolt with the. And that worked. And I made that little spacer because this bolt's turned a little longer. Plus, we had trouble with the lathe, and I didn't realize. Probably had the problem all along with the spacer of that. So that's all repaired, and hopefully we'll be good. I hope you enjoyed this week's shop talk. Uh, uh, this week, I hope you enjoyed the work and what few pictures I showed of the tool block and repairs I tried to make on it. Basically, I didn't show all of it. What was happening is when I went to re after I cut the angle on the handle I ended up with to tighten it up and it wouldn't tighten the back screw would not tighten up come to find out the screw had stripped out in the cast iron and I had never tightened it that tight so I don't know where it was just bad from the get-go or what so basically what I did was pull everything off drill it out to a standard size I put it like a 5 16 coarse thread and actually put three bolts in it and you've seen that so that seemed to stiffen it up. It worked real well. Also, today you kept hearing me complain about my breakers in both videos. I stopped today, and an electrician friend of mine told me to just put a larger breaker in. Well, I never had the trouble. I run the lathe one time off a drop core over here at the house, a different brand of breaker. I don't understand that these are eating cutler hammers in my shop, and uh, the GEs is what's in the house, but. Anyway, I went ahead and just got, instead of a 20 amp, put a 30 amp breaker on it. Let's see how that works. It may be just something about the design of the Eaton breaker. It's a little bit more sensitive to back feeds or whatnot. And again, all the new subscribers to the Country Boy Machining Channel, you know, I think there one time this week I had five different people in the same day subscribe. Uh, I really am flattered and appreciate it. it it's hard for me to fathom that there's a number of people in this world who subscribe to my channels and watch my videos and my videos are a lot plainer, a lot simpler than the other machining videos. I'm just a guy, you know, I do machining for a living. I work in a transmission plant. And, but, so my time's sort of limited for, for projects. And the thing of it is, it amazes me people want to come out and see me in my small shop, my little Asian lathe. That's what a lot of uh, uh, hobbyists have, you know. I did mention in one of my videos I would like to have an American lathe, but things in, in North Carolina, they're rare. I seen one on Craigslist, and it didn't last two days. And, and then it was an Atlas. I think they wanted like $1,500 for the Atlas. There's... A closet that come through about 1500 is in blowing rock and it didn't last, and then that's about an hour or two from here. Uh, I've seen an unknown look like an American lathe in Winston in a guy's basement he had on Craigslist, and, and I, I, they wanted 1200 for it. And I actually tried to contact him, and he never emailed me back, so I guess he wasn't interested, or somebody else may have done contact and bought it because basically, lathes around here go pretty quick. You know, eventually I hope to have a better lathe. Now mine works, it just don't have a gear. The biggest thing I don't like, it doesn't have a quick change gearbox. If 
I decide I want to do single point thread and I have to put the change gears in. It's not that big a deal, but it kind of makes me avoid it. And I've struggled a little bit in this video of my taps. I'm going to probably order me some new taps, or at least to come with the bigger sizes. I think what has happened with my taps is these are, it's an old Craftsman set that I've had for years now. Probably the taps are dull from just being used to tap God knows what. So, just look and see how far my video is saved. I'm, I'm doing this one a little different. I put the clips together and we'll save them as a video and then put the closing and opening on it. It's not the way I normally do things. So, I hope you enjoyed this week's Shop Talk. Uh, I'm going to end up, like I say, probably being in the market for some new taps. And like I had some extra time this week and I thought the lawnmower sharpening video would be good to put separate. So, I got plenty of content for you this week. So, I hope you all enjoy it. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends that's interested in machining and, 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 and watch your old dumb old country war try to do something, you know, with simple tools. So, I appreciate it. So, I want you to all enjoy. You have a good, this should be out maybe before Easter. If it is, that you hope you had a good Easter. Hope you found all your eggs. So, We'll talk with you later. Maybe next week we'll get you something else up. Thank you.